We already have 22 million people out of work in one month, 22 million. They're expecting near 20% unemployment. I'm gonna give my prediction, what I think is gonna happen, not just in the economy, but also the real estate market. I'm gonna give you my opinion on what sectors and jobs and which industries are going to crush it and do so well in this new economy, and also which ones I think are going to get hit the hardest. I'm gonna talk about what happened in 2008, the last market crash. I'm gonna talk about the stock market and just so much great information. You're gonna learn a ton about where we've been over the last 15 years and where I believe we're going. So please smash the like button until it turns blue, subscribe, and if you enjoy the content, share it with a friend. Thanks so much and here we go. In America, we have a population of 330 million. Good majority of them are seniors, retired, and the other good majority are under 18 years old. They're in school, in high school, in elementary school, and the rest, the working force, we already have 22 million, 22 million people out of work, and this lockdown has only been going on for just over a month, just over a month, and our former unemployment rate before this lockdown was, you know, 3%, 4%, dancing in that area. Now we're nearing 18%, and it doesn't look like this is slowing down. If anything, it looks like it's expediting, and it looks like it's going to get much, much, much worse before it gets better. And here's a chart from Vox, just to put it into perspective. Message from Blackstone. Byron Wayne weighs in on employment, China, and the healthcare system. Second paragraph, unemployment could reach 20%, Wayne said in a monthly market commentary, speculating on the sector. That would be a level not seen since the Great Depression. It also means that 30 million American workers could be out of work for some period and will continue to need checks from the U.S. Treasury. Blackstone is a private equity firm. They have offices all over the world, all over the world, and they are currently managing over $439 billion. $439 billion, a five-fold increase since the last market crash, 2007. What did they do? Uh, after that, 2007, 2008, 2009, they came in uh, and they invested in 55,000 properties, single family homes, property all over America, 55,000 of them, opened a company called Invitation Homes, obviously did extremely well, but their goal is to have $1 trillion in assets by 2026. And as we step into this recession, what do they invest in? They invest in Anilin Pharmaceuticals. They closed this April 13th, so last week. And what happens in a recession? Most people are staying home. They're self-medicating. They're depressed. A lot of people are out of a job. They're financially strapped. And they're looking to kind of get away from their troubles, their fears. And a lot of them trying to find that solution at the bottom of a pill bottle. And uh, Blackstone is there to, uh, I think, make a great return on that investment. If you're looking at it strictly from an investment standpoint, I think they're going to do uh, probably quite well on it. They continue to scale invitation homes to over 80,000 homes for lease in 17 markets across the country. They sold a billion dollars worth of shares as of May 2019. Ray Dalio, founder of Bridgewater Associates, he's worth $18 billion, and he is expecting a three to five year period of global restructuring and that self-sufficiency, creativity, adaptability, and bipartisanship will be the keys to an economic recovery. Three to five years, he's predicting, with a very uneven distribution of winners and losers, including in asset classes, Dalio said. He cited gold and certain stocks, especially those of companies with strong balance sheets, as some of the beneficiaries. Think about that for a second. He also believes, unlike the 2008 and 2009 financial crisis, when the U.S. government had to decide whether to save big banks and help homeowners, the scope of the rescue effort is much wider now. Not only has the Fed started buying junk bonds for the first time, the government is lending to small businesses and sending money directly to tens of millions of Americans whose livelihoods have been devastated by the pandemic. Downturns of this magnitude are so dramatic that they inevitably produce a new world order. Carl Icahn, who has a 
a net worth comparable to Ray Dalio, who's worth about $17 billion. And he made his fortune through gaining controlling positions in companies and either forcing them to buy back their stock at a premium price or manipulating company decisions to increase shareholder value. So he's a real, real uh, predator. People that have companies, CEOs that have companies that have a healthy, healthy uh, balance sheet, but it's just not run correctly or uh, maybe bad management, uh, they're keeping their eyes out, making sure Dalio is not peeking around the corner. And he has a uh, interesting take on commercial real estate. He's expecting it to blow up. He's expecting it to blow up. You read the last sentence. It says that many of the country's malls will default on loans made to them over the last 10 years. This is where he's betting his money. Uh, commercial real estate. Now as economic issues induced by the coronavirus pandemic spread this year amid a potentially looming recession, he said troubles will extend to the owners of office buildings as well, saying it is the 2008 housing market collapse happening all over again. You're going to have this blow up too and no one's even looking at it, Icon told CNBC. So the S&P Case-Shiller U.S. National Home Price Index uh, has the... Uh, August 2006 numbers at 184, 184. Uh, January of this year, it was at 212. So a increase of about 20, 25% from the last market high, depending on which city you are in. If you're in a coastal city, uh, a really desirable location, the numbers are much, much greater than 20%. Uh, it just kind of really depends on where you're at. But what's interesting is a lot of people, as we were coming through this last market cycle, started building out businesses and getting their life back on track. And now you have all these people that qualified for mortgages that are no longer working. And the stock market as well. Uh, 2006, we were about 13,000 on the Dow Jones. And now we're at 23,000. So we almost doubled. We were much higher. We were at 29,000. Uh, February 7th of 2020. So it was more than double since the last market crash. That's why I say only invest in things that you understand. Don't jump on a trend. If something dropped 5% or 10% or 15%, uh, that doesn't make it a good deal. I mean, look at where we've come. There's so many companies that are going to go under and there's a lot that's going to change. Whether something goes up or down 5 or 10%, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is true value. During the last market crash, Lehman Brothers went under 2008, Washington Mutual, 2008, General Motors, 2009, Citigroup, 2009, Chrysler, 2009. I mean, some huge, huge companies. Uh, the least valuable company on this list at the peak was exceeding $15 billion, $15 billion market cap. Lehman Brothers went bankrupt. Merrill Lynch, AIG, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae. Now, all these huge lenders came within a whisker of doing so, and they had to be rescued in 2008. And so what's happening now? So if social distancing becomes our new reality, a lot of these uh, brick-and-mortar companies, these mom-and-pop businesses, uh, even the really successful chains are going to be pushed, and I think they're going to be pushed right out of business. Uh, look at uh, Express closing down 66 stores. Gap 230 stores and downgraded by the S&P. GNC closing 230 stores. H&M closing 160 stores. JC Penney 94 stores. Kmart 45 stores. Macy's 125 stores. You get the point. Sears 51 stores. Um, and bankruptcy so far 2020. True li True Religion Pier One, um, Art Van Furniture, Modell Sporting Goods. Uh, SFP Franchise Corp, uh, Blue Stem Brands, and this is this doesn't factor in for any of the damage that we've already experienced so far with this lockdown. Which companies do I think are going to be impacted the most come the rest of the year and probably in the not so distant future? Uh, small brick and mortar businesses like restaurants, uh, airlines, especially tourism. Think Disney World, Disneyland amusement parks, museums, hotels, schools, and colleges. Colleges are going to be questioned. Uh, people, I think, will think differently about spending $50,000 to uh, 
to go to a college when there's going to be a, I believe, a huge surge in new universities, people going online, and a lot more competition for, um, you know, for that, uh, to supply that education, for that opportunity. So that's going to bring college prices down is what I would expect. Plus, I think this will um, overall affect the perspective of people. They're going to be second-guessing their careers because they're going to start seeing a lot of people um, you know, going under, going out of business, uh, things changing. You have construction workers that are going to feel the pinch. Gym owners, LA Fitness, Equinox, all these big gyms, uh, bus drivers, real estate agents, house cleaning services, and lawn care uh, services, personal trainers, shipping and distribution. It's probably easier to name the companies that are not going to be impacted for the negative. However, there are some that are going to benefit in a huge, huge way. It's going to be Amazon. Uh, people are going to, there's going to be a, a large chunk of the population that's going to be scared to go out to a grocery store, to go to a restaurant, to go anywhere and contract this virus and bring this home to an, an elderly um, loved one, to their spouse, to to anyone. So people are going to be hesitant to go out and spend money. They're going to spend money online. Big tobacco. People are going to be nervous about their finances. They're going to be um, a bit more um, scared. So what do people do when they're panicked and worried? They smoke cigarettes. People that have the addiction smoke cigarettes and they smoke, smoke them in volume. Divorce lawyers are going to benefit as well because people are going to be at home with their spouse and they have financial issues, and that's one of the number one reasons for divorce is financial issues. So you're going to have one spouse possibly blaming the other for the situation. Um, you're going to have couples realizing things that maybe they don't like about one another, and it's going to be magnified with this lockdown. Um, and I think divorce lawyers are going to benefit pharmaceutical companies with uh, antidepressants, uh, streaming services like Netflix. Real estate investors, really savvy real estate investors that are able to pick up great properties at a great price. They'll always do the best because to me, shelter is the only thing that's real. Uh, streaming services, all these other things can, it could be the next MySpace for all we know. But shelter in 50 years, 100 years, people always need a place to live. Payday loans and short-term emergency financing, private money lenders, people that can offer a um, almost like a, a safety net to people that were over leveraged. Those, those lenders are going to do well. Facebook and other social media platforms are going to do extremely well because people are going to be trying to take their business online. They're going to want to uh, advertise online. They're going to see how they can cut costs. And people are going to close their businesses down and they're going to try to go online, take that brick and mortar business uh, online. So they're going to be advertising on Facebook and these other social media platforms. Uh, online dating websites are going to do uh, especially well. I think they're already doing very well, but I think that people are going to uh, go out to bars less and um, you know go out there to restaurants and socializing with friends at night. I think that's going to happen less for, in the foreseeable future. And food delivery apps are, are going to do very, very, very well. Now let's talk real estate. This is just a crazy, crazy period, a crazy time to be alive. We went through the longest economic expansion in history, coupled with a virus right at the end. It's like a two-punch knockout. You got 22 million people out of work, everyone's scared, everyone's saving money, and some people are looking forward to the opportunity because there's two types of people. There's one that's gonna be sad and like a victim to the situation, and then there's others that are going to be like the Blackstones that, you know, you might not, not have as much money as Blackstone, but you're looking for the opportunity to kind of wedge out a piece of land, piece of property for yourself and your family. Do something smart, something intelligent to take care of your family. Because one thing that we all realized during this period is, you know, you can't always rely on the government. Yeah, they're going to send checks out, but if your monthly expenses, let's say, are three grand, four grand. You're renting an apartment, um, you got a car, you have car payments, you have uh, insurance, you have a cell phone bill, student loan debt, you have all these bills, three grand, four grand a month, and then they give you a thousand or fifteen hundred or two thousand even. You're still short. And at the end of two months, three months, six months, 
it's going to be quite hard for you to catch up. And that's why you can't rely on a government, you can't rely on a boss or an employer. This, I think, is going to create a lot of entrepreneurs by necessity. People are not going to want to rely on a boss and kind of go through this or take this chance to go through this again. So here's what I think is going to happen with real estate uh, investors and real estate as a whole coming up in this upcoming contraction. What has the federal government done so far to help tenants and homeowners? So late in March, Congress passed the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security, the CARES Act, the $2 trillion package of relief measures for businesses, state and local governments, and individuals, including in a package with a 60-day moratorium on foreclosures on homes with federally backed mortgage loans, mortgages insured by the Federal Housing Administration, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, or another federal agency. The law also allows multifamily property owners with federally backed mortgages to request forbearance for up to 90 days during the financial hardship. Forbearance is a delay in mortgage payments with no accrual of interest or fees. Landlords who receive forbearance under the CARES Act would be barred from serving eviction notices to tenants during the period of forbearance. The law also prohibits all landlords with federally backed mortgages from evicting renters until at least July 25th. Now, forbearance, I would like to think of it like a zero interest credit card, and at the end it goes up to you know 26%. And what I mean by that is you pay no interest during the period that you're holding the card, but at the end you owe everything that you uh, spent. So if you have six months of mortgage payments and each one is $2,000 and you lost your job, at the end of six months you're going to owe $12,000. $12,000 is going to be a large chunk of money given that most people, they get an apartment or get a house with a, if you're lucky, three times your monthly uh, lease or housing cost. So if you're, if you're spending $1,000 a month in rent, you're probably bringing in $3,000 if you're living within your means. If you live in Los Angeles or an expensive city, it could be upwards of 54% of gross income for housing. So the idea that these tenants are going to be able to come up with six months or three months worth of uh, back rent is highly unlikely. And same with landlords. I think landlords are going to not be able to come up with all that money. And then I think what's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of people that are going to ask for loan modifications. And how that works is they simply try to requalify you for the mortgage. And if you lost your job, you don't have a source of income, and it's going to be a uh, messy situation for a lot of landlords, a lot of tenants. And uh, I, I just I see this ending uh, badly for um, for these people. And I think what this is going to teach us is going to teach a lot of people to live below your means. I mean, we all know someone that lived through the 1929 Great Recession and it changed their lives forever. And I think that this ultimately is going to uh, have a similar result. It's going to teach people to live below their means and, uh, and have a large uh, arsenal of cash at all times. So then we wonder who will likely feel the big punch of this. Yes, it will be companies, uh, larger companies, but mostly it's going to be, in my opinion, a lot of mom and pop investors. So there are 8 million individual landlords in America, those who typically own between 1 and 10 properties. They own and manage half the rental properties in the nation and to house about 48 million renters. So a lot of these people, um, they have a duplex or a triplex, they have one or two properties, and it's a part of their retirement plan. They're hoping that you know one day that property will be fully paid off and that building will provide sufficient passive income so they can live a nice retirement. Uh, however, now you have a lot of businesses that are no longer operational, and you have a lot of tenants that can no longer pay rent. So now it's going to be an interesting period because when this period, when this is all over, the landlord is going to need the back rent, and the tenant's not going to have the back rent. And then what happens? The landlord doesn't have the money, so now the landlord carries the weight of the 
uh, delinquency, the mortgage delinquency. And that's going to be a, uh, a big, big weight to carry on their shoulders. So then you ask the question, well, how many small businesses are there? Because you, you have to realize that a lot of these small businesses, they qualified for these rental properties off of income from their small business. So let's do a little research. How many small businesses are there in America? There's 30,200,000 small businesses in this country, which comprise a whopping 99.9% .9 of all United States businesses. As a note, we pulled this statistic from the SBA Office of Advocacy, which defines a small business as a firm with fewer than 500 employees. And then, so what happens? What happens to apartments? What happens to rental pricing and property pricing during these recessions? Well, supply and demand. I believe we're gonna be stepping into a period where we have people that kind of wanna sell their properties for the first, first portion of this, and then it's going to get to the point where people have to sell. And then there's gonna to get to the point where banks need, they need to unload property. So there's gonna be three waves of sellers in this market and what then ends up happening is that there's less qualified buyers to buy these properties think about it a lot of these buyers are going to be out of business they're not going to have a stable source of income before when you qualify for a mortgage they would check your um they would check your w-2s verify income verify your job and they would do that prior to closing i just helped one of my students close a property in new jersey last week and they verified his income two days before closing, and that's what they're doing across the board, is they're verifying that everyone still has a job, that everyone's still working. But what ends up happening? What ends up happening during these recessions? People think that because people don't have money that rents decrease. Well, that's quite the opposite. Look at this chart. The red line is real median rent, and the green is Household income. Let's look at the big recessions of the 80s, of the 90s, the, after the dot-com bubble of 2000. Look at even through 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's just rising. Rents are just only continuing to rise. And real household income is just decreasing. So over time, rents are going to get to a point to where I believe you're going to be living uh, in a world where dorm room uh, adult dorm room style living, roommates are going to be much more common, potlucks are going to be much more common where people want to kind of share the weight of the world with a roommate. So maybe they can share the cost of food, they can, they can split costs as they can. And real estate investors are going to see the opportunity. They're going to say, okay, I only need one deal. I need one deal that will change my entire life. Because look at how rents are rising. Rents increased by 12% from 2000 to 2010, but median income fell by seven. So this is going to be a crunch. This is gonna be a crunch of the middle class. That's without question. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of companies, there's gonna be a lot of investors, a lot of really smart people that are prepared for this, that know what to buy and how much to pay and where to where to invest. They're, they're smart, they're savvy, they're sophisticated. And that's what I wish on you is I wish that you take this time to see where the world's going and how you can position yourself and your family to see this as an opportunity. See this as a chance to buy uh, a really great asset, pennies on the dollar. And I think that's gonna be coming in the next few months. And I offer training. If you are interested in buying a rental property, I offer a mentorship training to teach you exactly what to buy, how much to pay, what to look for, I review your deals. We do FaceTime lives every single week. I have a Facebook community, and it's just incredible networking. And I offer two new videos every week, as well as 16 videos right when you sign up. And it's less than $100, less than $100 to try it out. My goal here is to offer so much value, like 100x value to where you remain a member and you want to you know, stay a part of the community. Here's one of two people that I helped close on a passive income cash flow deal in the last uh, about 10 days. So Abanov, he signed up and he's been in this program for about a year. 
and he got results. I'm just going to read what he said. I have gotten great results as I can implement that knowledge to generate my monthly passive cash flow. I highly recommend this. What you get here is a great mentor and a learning hub for real estate knowledge with the power to network with those who are already in the real estate buying and aspirants of possibilities of partnerships. He met someone else inside my program that lived in Tampa. He lived in New Jersey. They partnered up, bought a fiveplex, and they're both cash flowing four figures a month. So then he says, why should you invest in this program? It's always great to invest in knowledge for yourself first. Through this program, you'll get an awesome mentor, Mr. John Williams, who has hands-on experience over 15 years in real estate. Helped me a lot. Come be a part of this real estate learning community full of great minds. And I just helped Sandra close on a duplex five days ago. Uh, the message reads, Hey, John, five days since closing on a multifamily. Just got first security deposit today on first floor for $1,700. Getting security deposit for the second floor tomorrow at $1,750. The positive cash flow, $1,150 a month. We've had at least 20 plus callings since putting up for the rent side. No one is even blinking an eye on renting these units. Thanks again for all of your guidance. Making four figures a month, you got 30-year fixed rate mortgage debt at 2.75%. 2.75% fixed over 30 years, profiting four figures a month. 3.5% down mortgage. So it's just, just an absolute incredible... Uh, incredible opportunity to make a ton of money in the long term and in the short term if you know what you're doing. So that's what I think is going to happen. That is what the experts are saying. Uh, that's what the market's saying. I agree. And I think that we're going to be stepping into a hell of a uh, six month, 12 month period. I think it's just going to get crazy. I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity. And another thing that I think is also going to grow is outreach, reaching out to uh, places like India uh, for talent, for affordable talent, because now with online, I think a lot of these brick and mortar businesses are going to try to go online to cut down on costs. They can recruit talent there for much less. They can get really, really, really smart people. They could probably hire three or four people over there for the price of one uh, full-time employee in America. So I think that's going to be a big trend as we continue moving forward into this new world. Please smash the like button, hit it till it turns blue. It's great for the algorithm and follow, subscribe, it's share it with a friend. Let's hit 25,000. I want to hit 25,000 subscribers um, in the next week. I think that'll be awesome. We've already done such an incredible job uh, in terms of growth and I'm going to continue putting out a lot of great videos. Uh, my goal is to put out a great video like every 48 hours. So if you really enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe. Thanks so much.